Howdy, Tinker Nerds. Am I in the comment show right now? No, stop it. Welcome to the comments, no stop it show for my no stop it how to make a security camera, no stop it part three video, no stop it, click here, no stop it. If you haven't seen it, no stop it. Let's see what you guys had to say. I have alerted Kip K of your shenanigans. Just so you guys know, I have nothing against Kip K. In fact, he was the one that inspired me to start doing video tutorials. But as you can imagine, it does get a little bit frustrating whenever you see his level of success versus my own when we both essentially do the same thing. Except I do it better. I'm pretty certain my neighbors came through our garden to jump over the wall to get into their house. But in the process, they broke our garden table. More recently, they must have attempted to jump the fence as that was broken too. Wow, that was legitimately an intriguing story. Have you thought about moving? Would it be possible to use some code in libraries to make a motion tracking device like the Kinect and pass the movement to the cursor for motion control? I don't see anything wrong with that idea. You could use simple CV to detect whether an object is moving left, right, up, or down, and then you can use Python to pass those corresponding commands to the cursor. Also, it just so happens that simple CV has libraries specifically for the Microsoft Kinect, so you could use that as well. Was an RP3 overkill for this, and can you please do a car PC using an RP3? Actually, no, it wouldn't be overkill. The Raspberry Pi 3 has more processing power, which means it would be able to process the images faster and give you faster results. As for the car computer, yeah, I would love to make one, but it may be a little bit further down the road, because first I would like to find a way to interface with the car itself using the OBD2 port scanner. So I got a lot of work to do. Don't forget to inform people about what kind of laws exist and what you're allowed to video surveillance and not. This may be different in your country or area, but be sure to look up your local news. Couldn't have said it better myself. I would strongly recommend against using the RPI from the GPIO pins. That way bypasses a lot of fuses and protections that could potentially toast your pie if something goes wrong. Also, there is no undervoltage protection. It would be better to strip a USB lead and solder that to the according post behind the Pi's USB connector. While the battery pack I use does have its own protection circuit, Wildrick is right. I am not and I do not pretend to be an expert at any of this. I just like to create the things that pop in my head. It takes companies years to perfect safety regulations and usage and procedures for a product, so don't take this as the professional way to make something. I'm not trying to make a product here, and I'm not trying to show you the proper way to do something. As the channel name implies, I'm just tinkering. All right, now that the Raspberry Pi security camera project is over, I've learned a lot of do's and don'ts about how to select a project. Let me summarize by saying that number one, I'll be showing how to code less in my videos because that makes for a very boring tutorial. Number two, I'll be doing projects that involve more practical things that you can find around your house and not center the videos around Raspberry Pis. Just as an example, taking an old Nokia phone and turning it into a smartwatch. If that works, it'll end up being my next video. However, that may be a couple weeks out but you can follow my Twitter account for project updates. All right, guys, thanks very much for all the comments, and I will see you all next time.